Hey, Simon here, and today I want to ask a question. The question is, if we can use this image, reduce it to 256 colors, extract the palette, and then save only a grayscale version of the image and the palette, you see here, and then recombine it in Unreal. Why would we do that? To save memory. If we could use this technology, then we could um, put four grayscale images in one texture using the RGB and alpha channel and then using a smaller texture with all these gradients and recolorize the stuff in Unreal. Similar stuff is already uh, happening with um, here for example you see this nice block and he describes how to use such a gradient with um, a grayscale plank for example and then get many variations out of this by only applying different gradients. And I strongly recommend this talk, by the way. It's called um, it's called 8-bit uh, 8 8-bitish 8 graphic outside the box, and it's a great great talk about how they did uh, in the early times all this pixel art and using, for example, uh, palettes to change day or night without changing the actual picture, only by applying a different palette. Super interesting stuff. And I thought maybe we can use that in Unreal as well. Unfortunately, the answer to this is, um, yes, it's possible, but it's not worth it. Um, I will go about this more in detail, but just a short form. To make it work, we have to disable mip maps, you have to disable um, texture compression, and you have to disable um, the filtering. And all in all, it looks ugly and uh, takes, I guess, more memory than when you just use three colored pictures. But more about this in a second. First, let's have a look at the general idea. I prepared something here in Unreal. This is the material and it uses it uses a grayscale texture of wood as you can see here let me put this and a gradient map uh, like i showed like i showed in the article right it's just this gradient and views the brightness of the pixels in this texture as uvs for the gradient right Remember the standard UV layout is basically values from 0 to 1 in two axes. We have only one axis here and we have our texture which values as well going from 0 to 1. And what this means is the darker the pixel here in this texture, the more we sample color values from this side here and the brighter it gets we go all the way here and sample from the um, yeah, higher positions basically. Uh, so and when I combine this then we get our um, gradient mapped grayscale texture, which is kind of cool. Looks almost like in Photoshop. Uh, the colors are a little bit different, but I think this has to do with the post-processing or something. What you have to mention is that when you import this grayscale texture, you have to disable sRGB, but more about this later. So let's first ha have a look on how to create these uh, textures and how to extract the gradient. This is, the, this is the picture in its original form. And the first thing you have to do is to change the mode to be indexed. And then you will be asked how many colors you want. And we, of course, set it to the maximum possible 256 uh, values. It's kind of okay. It got some color bending here, but I mean, that's uh, to be expected. But the overall um, impression has not changed. And when you go here, uh, here, uh, scroll up, then you have here color map of image uh, 31, this is this one here, and we can double click, and this is all the colors which this image uses right now, it's only 256. And to extract these values in a gradient texture like we saw before, we just uh, click here and say duplicate palette and we um, rename it circuit. And go back here and have it here now. By the way, if you don't see these tabs, just go to Windows, Dockable Options, and activate Color Map and Gradients and Palettes. Then you should be fine. Okay, we have now our gradient. We can double click it and then we have it here. And to put this into a texture, first we have to right click and then uh, Palette to Gradient. 
which creates a gradient here. It's uh, named the same way, circuit. We can open it. This is our gradient. And to put this into a texture, we just right click here and then do custom gradient. Um, sometimes the, uh, the dialog is not appearing. I have to click it here in the taskbar. And I have to set it to 256 pixels wide uh, width <clears throat> and the height eight pixels just for demonstration purposes. You can use two or something. Okay, and this creates um, this really nice texture for us, which is perfect because this is exactly the gradient we need. It is the palette converted to a gradient. And we can save this as a circuit gradient and be uh, fine. I set the compression level to zero. And for the picture, we have to we have to uh, turn this into a gray image, but we, we should not just use desaturation. I will show this to you here. I will use desaturation. Where is it here? We just desaturated, right? And in this we will do what's really necessary. What's really necessary is that we have, this is our color palette here, right? And we have to um, basically map all these values to the current position, right? If we look at the gradient, um, this position is at uh, zero, for example, and here it's, I don't know, 20 or something, and it goes all the way here. So every pixel has a certain position, and we want that uh, when he, there's a black pixel here in the, um, uh, in the, in the image, then we, we want to sample the color value exactly from position zero, and when there's a color value here, uh, with the gray value of 20, we want to have exactly 20 here, right? So a one-to-one -one mapping. And so what we have to do is to create a, a palette, a color palette, which starts here with black, goes here to white, and has the index of this palette entries basically mapped to the color. So this should be color zero, this should be color one, two, three, four, five, until 255. And we can do this by easily um, setting this color here to um, zero and this color to white. It's already like that. And then go into our um, uh, palette menu, cl right click and say import palette. And here we can set a foreground to background RGB. And what this is, it creates for us this little um, thing. We can rename it, double click it, and rename it to gray. And here we see that we have only gray values in our palette. And when you double click here, we see, okay, this is value zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, exactly what we need. And now we assign this palette to our picture, which is already reduced, right? It's already reduced to 256 colors. So we set image, no, we set colors, map, set color map. Uh, I'm sorry, I uh, didn't find something. You shouldn't see this error. Um, and then we set it to gray. We just created this, hit OK. And now this image is perfectly prepared to map the brightness of the values to the position in our um, gradient palette. And just for comparison, this is our desaturated image and this is the image what we want. So as you can see, there is a difference and yeah, you shouldn't just desaturate. Um, but you should export this as circuit gray. Okay. This is how you extract the color information and turn it into a gradient. Just one note, if you don't have enough colors, right? Here in the, in the palette, you see that our circuit has 256 colors, which is the maximum. If you have an image like this here and you create, um, and you look at the, at the palette, one second, I have to convert it to index as well, like so and then go up here into the palette. We see that we only have five colors and five colors is uh, not enough. We can um, duplicate this and name it Unreal. And then we can create a gradient like we did before, palette to gradient and look at this. Then we see that the gradient like expected maps from zero to one, it maps the whole space and um, yeah, this is basically it. And what we want is that this value here later, this gray value here maps to this position and this gray value here maps to this position. Okay, let's um, convert uh, this into a grayscale uh, image like we did before. So um, color map, 
set color map and then again window is not appearing but here it is gray and we don't see anything because now this color map looks like this no wait a second it's a little bit hard where is this this is image uh, i don't know why i don't see the color palette yet but basically we put these five first values of our gray, um, gray palette into um, the original palette like here right which means that you only see dark values and this means again um, we have a one-to-one -one mapping right so this would mean that when we look at the gradient we would only sample uh, color data from here which is not what we want we have to make these um, gray values reach from here to here and use the whole space of our gradient and we do that by uh, adjusting the levels this is pretty easy we just have to look here how many colors we have in this palette and it's it's uh, five colors okay so what we have to do is adjust the levels which only works in rgb mode just ch change back to rgb and then um, go to colors and go to levels and here you put in four why four uh, i mean we have five colors but it starts counting at zero so zero to four is five elements basically and you see that now our texture um uh, uh, yeah just appeared and yeah this looks looks fine and we could export this now i already did this uh, i just wanted to show you how to handle uh the, the the problem basically when you have not the maximum of 256 colors okay cool so here um is an empty material and now let's import the textures we import the circuit gray and the circuit and maybe also the okay so then let's start with our material i just drag and drop these in here this should be the gray one yes that's the gray one we just put this as uvs this is emissive color and here i set the uh, mode to unlit just to have almost correct colors and as you can see it's not really what we expected tja and here the problems start so first like i said before you have to set um gray texture to srgb and now when we save and hit here save we should get an, a warning no not yet um because it's not updating for some reason um live preview it's activated but okay now it's complaining that it's not set to linear color we have to set it to linear color because we unchecked the srgb box we don't want to have these values gamma corrected because these values map one to one to our palette and they shall be used as they are in the texture and therefore we have to disable srgb okay now it looks a little bit better but still we are not there what we have to uh, set uh, as well is not having it um, compressed and we have to set uh, a filtering of um, nearest and that should be it for the first part we have to update this here okay now it gets a little bit better but we have to do some options uh, in the gradient as well the gradient has to be uh, uncompressed as well and should be nearest filtering okay now it gets a little bit closer at least but it's still not really uh, what we want and for the gradient we have to set no mip maps and now you see that we are pretty near to the original image if we compare it side by side yeah um this is almost pretty uh, similar right so the, the mid maps are not allowed actually and let me go a little bit newer here we have these problems and this is because of the um, uh, missing clamping because what sometimes happens is that the texture gets sampled let me show this the texture gets sampled here and then some values or for some reason for interpolation reasons or something it samples also a little bit from here and this is these holes so just 
set clamp to zero. So, okay, we solved this problem. And as you can see, um, this works quite okay now. But when we go further away, did you, did, I hope you can see this in the, in the YouTube video. When we go away, the colors change. And this is also because of the, um, uh, the MIP mapping, but this time in this grayscale texture, we also have to disable the MIP mapping here because without it will not work. And now we should go back and now it's fine. Okay. I mean, fine in quotes because of course we get flickering pixels uh, when because of the missing filtering and we use a really big texture here look at this it's um it's one megabyte while when we would set it to compression it's only 128 kilobytes so it's a huge texture in comparison um but without it doesn't work the color values are just not correct and and then we have this this filter issue and the filter problem uh, is because here what you see here is different different values in uh, in in color but when I show you the same with the grayscale texture you will notice that yeah we have gray values right but these gray values are not just changing from one color to another or from one value stage from another this might be like 100, 120 or something and this might be 90 or no 140 and this might be 150 or something like that so there are big pretty big jumps and when we look at this texture here you see all these colors right imagine that um, this color samples from this point here and this color samples from this point here in between you would have all these different colors and that's exactly what happens when we set the filtering to uh, the standard value oh no this is the wrong texture actually so like so when we set the filtering in the grayscale texture uh, to default then we see these transitions here right these gradients yeah, and this is exactly the reason why we see these artifacts when we um, when we look at this here. These artifacts are exactly what I just showed you. The sampling from here to here has many color values in between, and this is what you see here. And that is the reason why we have to set the filtering uh, to be. Let me update this um, to nearest. Okay, cool. Not cool, but yeah, at least we know what the problem is. So as you saw, we have to disable um, we have to disable the compression, we have to disable the filtering, and we have to disable the MIP maps to get this working. So this is not really something we want. But, uh, but at least it's kind of interesting that it's possible and maybe one of you guys has an idea how to solve all these issues because if we could solve it, if we could use compression filtering and MIP maps, it would be kind of a cool technique to, to use the RGB channels in, com uh, in combination with these little palette gradients. But um, as far as it concerns me, I have no idea how to do that. Yeah, thanks for... Thanks for listening and uh, see you soon.